All right, guys, let's break down this photo. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome back to yet another video of the photo breakdown where I take my photo sets and break them piece by piece to show you guys how we created the image with the lighting settings and the camera settings. This was gonna be an interesting one as this one involves something I've never done before. I've never worked with a subject on stilts. In the video, we worked with this gentleman right here. He was an amazing person to work with, but he definitely brought the challenge to me. So during our consultation call, he expressed to me that he needed specific photos. He was trying to print promotional banners for himself on stilts, and he needed someone to photograph the pictures that will go on those banners. That's where I come in. So in the video, you're gonna see that I worked in a studio that has tall ceilings because that was definitely something that we needed to worry about. I believe he was about feet tall, if not feet tall. This studio worked out perfectly for that. All right, guys, I have a quick challenge for you guys. Go in the comments, let me know what you think the height is on this man when he's on his stilts. At the end of the video, I'll let you guys know exactly what the answer is. Being that I've never done something like this before, I was thinking how to light it. So now, let's talk about lighting. How did I light it? I did this with a one light setup. So the three elements were the C-stand, the light unit, and the light modifier. I used an 11 foot C-stand by Newer because C-stands come in clutch. Even when I'm outdoors, sometimes I bring C-stands along to those shoots. They're a little heavy and a little hard to transport, but if you have assistance or work with a team, they can easily help you out with that. If not, you can definitely bring them on a cart or transport them in any other way that works for you. So I ended up using the AD400. I used a 48 inch softbox to light the scene and the light unit was set camera right and a few feet away from the subject, almost where I was standing. So that way I have a broad spread of light. All right guys, I'm a short guy. <laughs> I'm not gonna say my height here on YouTube, but I'm a short guy and this guy's really tall. So how do we do this? How does this work out? Simple, we use the ladder. So close, yet so far away. And I ended up just climbing the ladder and we went to work. It took a few tries to make sure that I was the perfect height as I wanted to shoot level. So that way there wasn't any distortion in the final pictures for the graphic designer to use. Once I went up and down the ladder a few times to make sure that A, everything was level, B, everything was lit well, and C, that he fit in the frame, we were good to go and we were good to get started. Why did I use a 400 watt light? Could I have gotten away with this with a 8200, a 200 watt light? Yes, I could have. But all that would do is kill my battery in my 8200. And I feel like the 200 watts would just take a longer recycling time. The 400 provides me a faster recycle time. And if I'm shooting at full power, I definitely want to make sure that my lighting unit is prepared to do that constantly. All right, let's talk about the camera settings, the EXIF data. The lens of choice for this shoot was a 50 millimeter, the nifty 50. Don't kill me now. I could have used a 24 millimeter, something wide, something that would have made my job way easier. But again, like I mentioned before, I didn't want any lens distortion. Sometimes we gotta work with what we have. And the 50 millimeter was what I had and it worked out perfectly for me. My client was happy, he got his banners. That's all that matters, guys. All right, so the camera settings were one over 200, the aperture was set at F9 and ISO 200. The key light, the only light, was set at one over four. So let me pause right there, why F9? Well, being that I need his entire body to be in focus, I wanted to make sure that I was able to capture every single detail I can because this was also going to be printed in high resolution for some big banners. All right, so I missed an opportunity to explain it a little bit better. So here it goes. I'm gonna do it very easily and very quickly. So think of a group of people in front of your camera standing just ready for that picture, right? Let's just say four people, for example. If they're all together just side by side and they're looking at your camera and you're shooting at 1.2 and they're at the same plane, most likely they're all going to be in focus. But now let's say, for example, you have two people and I'm standing here and that person is behind me. If you focus on me, most likely your camera is gonna have that second individual capture them a little bit blurry. Why? Because it's all about your shallow depth of field. I'll make another video on that pretty soon. If you're trying to capture multiple people or a big group shot, the higher the number, the more focused, the more detail you will capture of all of those individuals. Although he was in the same plane, I wanted to make sure that everything was in focus, so I went with a larger number instead of being with a shallow depth of field, such as 1.2 or 1.4. I also want to mention that this set of pictures here were super fun. Not. Wait. They were not. So he had to juggle the bowling pins, and there's going to be movement. So now we have a tricky situation. Not only do we have to light this at full power, not only do I have to make sure it lines up and it fits the frame, I have to make sure that I capture the bowling pins in action, but freeze them just enough that they don't look blurry 
in the photo. So the settings for this series of photos was shutter speed 1 over 1000, the aperture was set to f6.3 and the ISO was set to 800. The flash power I believe remained at 1 over 4. All right guys so back to that challenge he was nine feet all right guys there you have it we got the light setups we got the camera settings and you have the story behind the photo i appreciate all of the support i've been receiving on this channel and outside of this channel guys if you have facebook click the link in my description join my private photo group so that way you can join the discussion and we can grow as photographers if you haven't already subscribed to my channel if you're new here if you just picked up the camera hit that subscribe button subscribe to my channel hit the bell button so that way you get notified every single time I drop a video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.